In this, the latest video in our FRChem Primary Revision 5 Minutes at a Time series, Dr Ian Stell will discuss bile. This is an excerpt from our Gastrointestinal Physiology webinar and covers the highlighted sections from the Royal College's Basic Sciences curriculum. To watch more, visit bromleyemergency.com or click on the link in the description below. The contents of the gallbladder is known as bile and it has a yellow or yellowy green colour. And it's produced by the liver cells, secreted by the liver cells and passes through the biliary tree, the biliary canaliculi, and is stored in the gallbladder so that between meals bile is collected up into the gallbladder ready for release during meals. It's mostly water of course but there's a few components that I particularly want to focus on. Just under 1% of it are what is known as bile salts and a very small amount of what is sometimes known as bile pigment or bilirubin. It's those that we're going to focus on. And of course the bile is stored within the gallbladder. It's concentrated there by about five times by water absorption. And then in response to cholecystokinin, which as we explained is released in response to fat within the duodenum, the gallbladder contracts and expels its contents down the common bile duct into the duodenum. The vagus also plays a part, but the main influence appears to be cholecystokinin. Let's have a look more closely at bile acids. Well, they're made from cholesterol. Cholesterol is converted to a cholesterol acid. And this lipid-soluble compound is then bound with a water-soluble compound by conjugation usually with glycine or taurine to form what are then known as the bile salts. If we have a look at one of these in a schematic way we've got the cholesterol element shown here in blue and then the side chain glycine or whatever shown in a light brown color and here you've got two important components bound together you've got a lipid soluble component formed from the cholesterol and then next to that you've got the water soluble component and so the two of these are important types of compounds similar to detergents. There's eight different bile salts in total we don't need to remember the names of them but they're called such things as kinodeoxycholic acid, tauracholic acid etc. So these compounds are what are known as ambiphiles, they're ambiphilic, that is on one side they mix readily with lipids and on the other side they mix readily with water. As a result of this where fat is being broken down and combined with bile salts it will form into an emulsion of small micelles which will be stable and these small fatty droplets each surrounded by bile salts provides a substance that the enzymes can then begin to work on, the lipases, etc. So here we see a small fat droplet shown in green, surrounded by these bile salts. And the lipid-soluble component will be attracted by the lipid environment, and the water-soluble component will remain outwards and will be stable in a water environment. And as a result of that, you have a stable droplet which is then accessible to other parts of the digestive system, lipases for example, which can then access the fat content in the center of this and begin to break it down in a way that they would not be able to do if there were large collections of fat together. Now the bile salts are valuable compounds within the body and they are recirculated. We make a certain amount of this, about half a gram per day, so that in total the body has a certain amount in circulation, has about 4 grams in total. But we release about 15 grams through the bile duct into the gut each day. So we are releasing much more each day than we actually have. And this is achieved through recirculation of our bile salts. And let's have a look at how that happens. So first of all the bile salts are excreted from the gallbladder down the common bile duct into the duodenum. They then pass through the small intestine, mixing with fat, performing their function, acting like a detergent, breaking up fat into tiny droplets and allowing absorption, etc. 
the fat etc gets absorbed and the bile acids continue on their way down through the small intestine until they reach the terminal ileum and once they reach the terminal ileum they can be absorbed through the epithelial layer and taken up by surrounding blood vessels from which they then return to the portal vein to the liver and are excreted again into the biliary system and back to the gallbladder. So that's the enterohepatic circulation through which bile salts are conserved to be reused. And about 95% of excreted bile salt is reabsorbed in each passage through the system. The remainder is metabolized and passed out.